The Pulse School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by BASF. Hi, I'm Amber Bell and this is Real Agriculture. I am here today with Mike Palmier and we're going to be doing a pulse school. We're going to be talking about starter nitrogen in pulses and the whole nutrient management cycle here. Uh, so welcome Mike, it's good to have you. Yeah, thanks for having me. Okay, so talking specifically about nitrogen impulses, because they fixate their own nitrogen to some extent, right? Um, what is recommended for starting off the year when you're seeding? Well, it, it, it really depends as well. Uh, I would say the first thing to, to do is to consider a soil test, uh, even if it's going into pulses. I know lots of uh, farms and uh, consultants in the area might not necessarily uh, test soil test ground for nitrogen going in front of pulses because it does fix, fixate its own nitrogen. Um, but if we are in a situation where we could have uh, low residual nitrates in the soil test, uh, then we might want to consider adding a little bit of, uh, let's say, urea or UAN or other synthetic nitrogen sources. Because uh, the recommendation is to ensure to have about 20 pounds of available nitrate in that uh, uh, pulse crop at the start of the year just to be able to kind of bridge that gap between uh, early on when it develops off of the seed. Uh, right now we're in a five node lentil crop. It's really just starting to uh, build its own nodules and fix its own nitrogen. Mm -hmm. And so there's a period of time where it could be lacking some, some nitrogen until it can fix its own. Right. And so at this stage, will the pulses be able to fixate all the nitrogen that they need or you know is it still gonna need that little bit of extra well so in our area we've had high nitrates in the soil and so i'm not too concerned about adding additional nitrate or nitrogen in that case because we've got lots if anything we ha maybe have too much in a few of the fields um, and so but if we if we were showing low nitrates on the soil test, say we're five or ten pounds, I mean to be able to increase it up to that 20, 25 pound range would be a good idea. Uh, and then once it starts fixing its own, we haven't given it so much that it's getting lazy, mm -hmm. right? Relying on right. the nitrogen available nitrogen that's in the soil, and that will fix its own and it will uh, provide itself enough nitrogen to carry through the year. Okay, so how does that recommended starter nitrogen correlate to a soil test? So you've gone, you've got your <laughs> soil tested, you know, how does that help you make the decisions and what would you be basing that on? Well, again, it's to take a look at that nitrate amount that's in the soil and uh, I would just be worried about, say, a zero to six inch depth within that soil profile because by the time uh, the roots start uh, exploring deeper than six inches. Uh, it's very, it, it should be fixing its own nitrogen and forming its own nodules uh, in accompaniment with the uh, rhizobium that we've added with the granular or liquid or peat inoculants. Mm -hmm. So if we are seeing low nitrates in the soil, uh, I'd say anywhere lower than say 15 pounds. Uh, then I would consider topping that up and adding enough so that you know you would be sitting in that 25 pound range total between the two. Okay. Um, the the key with that then obviously as well is that doesn't work as well depending on your fertilizer placement system. If you're in a, a mid row type system and that uh, mid row is five or six inches away from the seed, it's not necessarily going to access it that early anyway. So the advantage on that would be uh, less than if you were in a, a sideband. Uh, a twin knife or, or those types, a paired row, those types of uh, fertilizer delivery systems where it's a little bit closer so it'll access it earlier. So how does the added nitrogen fertilizer affect the nodulation in the peas? If you put down the proper amount, it really shouldn't affect it at all. Um, okay. It's if you're adding nitrogen fertilizer in, into an already high available nitrate ground. Say, you, ha you know, in our area, again, we've been growing uh, below average crops for the last three years just to uh, high temperatures and, and low uh, precipitation in season. We have a lot of built up nitrogen in some cases. So to add additional nitrogen fertilizer to that definitely does not help whatsoever and if anything can hinder. Because uh, if we have too much nitrogen available in that soil, the plant is the same as uh, human or other anything in the world. It's going to want to expend the least amount of energy to get the most benefit. Right. And so if it's that, if it's there and it's very available for that plant, they're going to try to pull up the nitrate that's already there and not try to expend the energy to work with the rhizobium to develop its own nodules and fixate, right? right. So that'll delay that nitrogen fixation. 
as well in some specific crops um, some of the research has pointed to if it accesses high rates of nitrogen early uh, that will potentially increase the amount of biomass that a lentil crop would have a little bit later mm -hmm. uh, if we have increased biomass and uh, we end up having strong growing conditions where that canopy is closed later on then we have issues potentially with molds and other diseases so again it's one of those things where it's not all these decisions aren't completely independent from the other mm -hmm. so we want to make sure that we do have enough nitrogen to be able to carry that plant to start off but not throw too much at it where we affect that nodulation so that's where that 20 25 pounds of nitrogen uh, between the two is, is kind of a nice number. What circumstances lead to failed inoculation where you might actually want to consider putting on nitrogen in season? There are definitely a few things to consider and some of this is in the planting stages through the winter. Um, so acidic pH soils are less conducive to year over year recovery and I guess longevity of the rhizobium that's in the soil. So on an acidic soil you want to be a little bit more careful. As well, if we haven't had a pulse on that ground before, you haven't really built up those rhizobium levels in the soil. So in those cases, I would really encourage everybody to uh, put down granular inoculant versus a, say, a peat or a liquid where we could have more issues potentially uh, with mixing with seed treatments. We know for sure it's in the soil. We know we have the right amount in that soil because if we haven't uh, had pulses in that ground before and we have an inoculant failure, I've seen 50% yield loss. Wow. If, if you've had a consistent rotation of pulses, then that yield loss is going to be significantly reduced where it still makes sense to apply it. It's still effective to apply it, but we might be looking at more like 10% yield loss. Um, and so, you know, I've seen some cases where, you know, we have some issues with, say, a seed treatment in a specific inoculant on ground that's never had pulses on it before. Mm -hmm. And after herbicide timing, uh, the plant's looking for some more nitrogen. It's already stressed out maybe a little bit from that herbicide. And we, we can d see vi very visual symptoms. Um, really, really pale, almost yellow. Uh, you can dig up the roots and you're not seeing those nodules formulating. You can cut open those nodules uh, and they're not that bright pink that you're looking for. And as right then, if you can catch it really early, then you could see a benefit from a nitrogen application, mm -hmm. um, but you've got to catch it pretty quick. Okay. And so again, it's those instances where we want to make sure like use a really high quality inoculant uh, make sure that it's safe and that's the idea with the granular inoculant is we can apply it directly within that soil no interactions with anything else that might hurt it right. uh, and put your best foot forward right and then so throughout the season really I mean the main thing is to be walking through your crop and actually knowing what's out there right <laughs> uh, absolutely and and you know take a look at that five and six node stage and get an idea if you are starting to see some formation of those nodules. That'll give you a bit of a peak. And again, that's always interesting timing because there's a few things always going on then. Your seed treatment is starting to wear off. Mm -hmm. uh, you should have, that crop will be switching over to fixing its own nitrogen and you're usually applying a herbicide at that time. Right. So there's a lot of areas where we could have stresses with the seed treatment wearing off uh, we could start seeing a little bit of pressure from soilborne disease. Uh, if we're short on nitrogen because we're not fix, fixing it, the plant's not fixing the zone as well, and then we hit it with an additional stress with the herbicide, mm -hmm. that's when we see a lot of things happen is right after that. Again, I think a lot of this starts in the wintertime. Um, you know, plan ahead, understand what type of situation that you're in, uh, what your pulse rotation has been on that land, what your uh, weed pressure is, all those types of things. Um, your previous year's crops versus the amount of nitrogen fertilizer that you gave it and try to make your uh, best plan in the winter time and, and really then all you have to do is, uh, is act on that plan and, and make sure operationally you get everything done if you want to. Okay, well that's great. Thank you so much for joining us on Real Agriculture and that was Mike Palmier.